Growing up, I never understood why my mother refused to get close to the edge of high places. Even if that was a sturdy safety railing, she didn't make a big deal out of it, so I never really noticed. I'd be hanging over, looking at a hundred foot drop, and she'd be back a few feet, but not acting abnormal. Some people don't like heights, but they don't bother me too much. I was always interested in ghosts and the paranormal. I had a healthy skepticism, but believed that we didn't know everything. I got her a little interested because she always wanted to know more, but she didn't become obsessed over it. One day, I was looking at a National Geographic special on the Grand Canyon, and she happened to mention that it would make her too nervous to go there. I asked her why, and for the first time asked her why heights scared her a little. It's not the height, she responded. I'm afraid I'll get a compulsion to jump. She went on to tell me a story of when she went with friends to the old palace theater. It's been restored, but back then, it was still just a rundown theater that had been converted to show movies. There was almost no staff, and they were free to roam around when the movie got boring. One of them found an entrance to the roof. It was a nice summer night, and they were goofing around as teens often do. They were looking over the edge to see how different things looked from up there. It was at least a four-story building, and they were at the top. Everyone was laughing and pointing when my mom said that she suddenly felt a strong compulsion to jump. She felt as if there was a hand in the middle of her back pushing her relentlessly forward. She was fighting back, but was unable to resist. One of the young men saw her and grabbed her arm yelling at her. She said that broke the spell and she sat down crying. That was the end of the party and they helped her down and got her home. She never told anyone about it, except me, just many years later. She thought she'd gone temporarily insane and it terrified her to think about it. The theater was built in 1921 and the chances were excellent that someone at some point had jumped from the roof. I haven't been able to find any record of it but it probably would have been hushed up. It's the feeling of a hand in the middle of my mother's back, telling her to jump or do something that's completely different to her personality that makes me think that someone remains behind. Once we talked about it, my mother said that she felt a whole lot better and that she's never had a feeling like that again. Even though neither of us are religious, we said a little prayer for the person who had been in so much pain that they had to take their own life from the building. My mother said our talk helped her a lot, but she's still not willing to risk standing on the edge of a really tall structure. And heck, to be honest, I kind of don't want her to. Last year, during my junior year of college, me and my four friends moved into a house together. We all brought our own things to decorate the house with, posters, paintings, and little knickknacks. One of the paintings was of a bartender pouring a martini. We would end up calling this painting, The Martini Man. I had a really weird feeling about it right off the bat. His wide eyes would follow you around the room, and there was just something creepy about it. When you were alone with it, it still felt like there was a real presence with you. About a month or two after the move-in, activity started happening. One day, I was sitting on the couch in the living room playing some video games. I started hearing some loud slamming at the front door. It sounded like someone was sprinting and body slamming into the door. Thinking it might have been some loud knock, I go to see if there's anyone there. There was nothing. This persists throughout the day, and I get up several more times to see if anyone's there. Nothing each time. It's the middle of the day, so I'm even more confused than creeped out. I decide to test the door, shaking it, slamming it, knocking on it, and even jumping into it. Nothing I did was even close to how loud the noises I was hearing. To top it off, this happened one day, and one day only. I never heard this happen again. Later, in the summer, when it was just me and the other guy living in the house, 
It was about 2 in the morning and I was lying in bed using my laptop. I started hearing really loud footsteps coming from the stairs. They were like fast stomps. They sounded like someone sprinting while completely drunk. At first, I thought it was my drunken roommate, but there was something strange in the pattern to them. I would hear them start in one part of the house, stomp to another, stop for a while, then pick back up in a completely different part of the house. Eventually, they came running up the stairs directly to my door and stopped. I was frozen with fear during the silence. They then started up again, downstairs this time. It kept going for at least 10 more minutes. I should probably explain why I pin all this on the painting and not the house itself. As I already said, its eyes would follow you around the room and had an overall creepy vibe to it. People would come over and say the painting scared them without hearing any of the stories. We had some girls over for a party and they insist that we take the painting down. I agreed and took it off the wall for a while. That's when I saw, written on the back of the canvas, the name of the painting, the spirit of the bartender. Quite frankly, I thought this was hilarious, as I had been expressing my distaste for the painting to my roommate for quite some time, and this only went with my claims nicely. After that year, the roommate who I stayed with moved out and took the painting with him. The activity died down after that. He ended up giving it to the bar he worked at and they threw it out after only two weeks. I can only imagine why. We actually managed to find the original artist on the internet and it seems he just paints the same thing over and over again. Let me know in the comments what you think about this painting and if you like the painting, drop a martini emoji in the comments. One day, I was walking home with a friend of mine on one of the trails around my town. We were almost at the end of the trail and I could see the road and sidewalk ahead lit by the street light. It was around 11 p.m. or so and we were just chatting about stupid things that happened at school that Friday morning. I was looking ahead the whole time and I saw movement straight ahead of us. I paused and stopped walking. I thought maybe it was a deer but it seemed much larger. My friend looked at me estranged and asked what was wrong. I told her, I think I just saw something over there. She told me to stop freaking out so we laughed it off and continued walking. About 10 seconds later, we were almost to the end of the sidewalk and clear as day out of the trees and bushes came this really really tall dark silhouette of what looked like a man with deer antlers on his head. My eyes were watery and I could feel the heat of my body spread in an instant. My adrenaline was pumping, and I just stood there and watched it as it silently glided across the trail into the patch of woods on the other side. I just remember thinking, What? What is that? And looking at my friend to make sure that she was seeing the same thing. The figure had no legs. It was just a straight rectangular body and a head that had antlers on it. My guess is that it was at least 8 feet tall from where we were. My friend just looked at me with the most disturbing look. I remember it like it was yesterday. It's been 2 years since we saw that creature, and I'm still too afraid to walk those same exact trails at night. This all started when I was just a small child. Mostly, they were super vivid dreams that literally scared the piss out of me. I couldn't make a connection between my dreams and what was happening in the physical world. Everyone around me just washed their hands of it and decided I had terrible nightmares. For me, it was a repeated hell. The same dreams over and over, again and again for years. The first time I ever gained control was when I was in middle school. My mom had moved us hours away from our friends and family due to her life choices that were affecting us. It mostly affected my older sister, who had to switch to a private school and move in with my ultra-religious grandmother because of bullying. So she packed us all up with her new girlfriend and moved us as far as she could. And now, my mom's attention was mostly on my chaotic older sister. 
which meant that she started to pay less attention to the middle child, me. Somehow, I gained the ability to be able to control my dreams once I realized I am dreaming. With that ability, I am able to pay attention to what is going on rather than freaking out until I wake up in a panic. Well, most of the time. Sometimes, whether I'm in control or not, these dreams I have still are very freaky. I have tried talking to my friends, sometimes boyfriends, about my dreams. I remember all of them. Some small details get hazy, but I remember the context and the important things. Everyone I've ever talked to seems to say the same exact thing. I know I can't be alone, the other half is the part that I rarely talk about. The part that makes me feel crazy, but it's the only one that makes sense. Sometimes I get messages or warnings in my dreams about things that are going to happen. They're not usually very clear, but usually clear enough for me to piece clues together. The first time it happened, I was 18, and I had a dream about an ex-boyfriend that I honestly never thought I would hear from again. I hadn't thought about him in I don't know how long, so I had no reason to be dreaming about him. The dream consisted of us meeting up again. Nothing too weird, I shrugged it off and went on with my day. After I came home from work, I went to check my voicemails. There, sitting in my voicemail box, was a missed call from a friend of mine telling me to get back to her because that same ex that I had a dream about the night before was trying to get in touch with me. Of course, I freaked out and had a mini heart attack. From then, little things like that would happen here and there. The first time it happened on a bigger scale was the night after my father passed away. She was a beautiful Hispanic looking woman with light skin and curly dark brown hair. The weird thing about this dream is that she was having an affair with my boyfriend. He also happened to be the father of my child that I was carrying. The dream kept happening, but I shrugged it off to pregnancy hormones. It wasn't until my son was born that my grandfather started coming into my dreams again. He kept trying to tell me something, but I couldn't understand him. One night, I kept thinking about him and the dream I had before I went to sleep. I don't know if that's what gave me the ability to understand what he was saying, but it worked. He told me, Snake, he's a snake. Then I woke up immediately after. Those words sat there with me for several days. There wasn't going to be any shaking it off this time. My then boyfriend worked as a manager for a large nightclub. I finally found a night that I could get away and decided to go have myself a couple of drinks at his club and surprise him. When I walked in, he was a little shocked, but he still greeted me with a smile and a hug. He casually escorted me over to the main bar and sat me down with one of the male bartenders. After introductions and a few minutes of casual talking, he strolled off to the other side of the bar. I waited a few seconds before I excused myself to the bathroom. When I was finally able to see where he ran off to, my jaw hit the floor. There she was, as real as ever, the girl from my dream. Not an exact replica, but she had the same exact features. That's when it all came tumbling down. I decided to dig deeper and found out that he had an entirely different life hidden from me. It's fair to mention that at the time, we did not live together. We didn't even live in the same town, but we were still in a relationship. The dream had all come together, and it all made sense. Well, everything made sense except for how it was possible that I saw this coming. The second large occurrence is my hardest to talk about. This one completely surrounds my late husband. I knew his death was coming, even before he made the decision to make it happen. I wish my dreams told me how it was going to happen, and not just that it was coming. My husband and I were together for a little over five years. We then had a son together. At one point, we separated, but we still couldn't keep our hands off each other. Once we found out that I was pregnant with our daughter, my husband decided that the separation was over and we moved back in together. After we were living together again, I was consistently having dreams about him either dead 
or me not being able to talk to him on the phone. However, I shoved that dream away because I found out the next morning that my sister was in the hospital. So that is where I connected the dots at the time. Thankfully, she was only in the hospital because of morning sickness. Sometimes I would hear a voice that said, hey, like if someone was standing right next to me, even though I was alone. We also had an incident where our infant daughter was somehow taken off of her crib. Neither of our boys would have been tall enough and she wasn't even pulling up yet. We also had the crib completely lowered at the time because she could sit up. Neither of us could figure out what happened, so we just let it go and never talked about it again. About two weeks before my husband's incident occurred, I started having a major feeling of dread. I tried telling my therapist about it a year after, and she decided that it was just anxiety. I know my anxiety because I have lived with it my entire life, and this was definitely not that. It was a feeling of death being close. I could feel it all around me every day. It definitely had my anxiety riled up, but it was not the same thing. The day after my husband's death, I noticed that the feeling of death following me was completely gone. For a while, I didn't dream about anything else except for my husband. Those dreams started out pretty bizarre, with him trying to tell me and convince me that he was a lot better. Then they turned into conversations with him, telling me that there wasn't anything I could have done to change what happened. It's been almost three years since his passing, and he doesn't show up in my dreams anymore. Now for what sparked me to even share my story, two nights ago, he did show up. At least, it was something that looked like him. Whatever it was, it was very evil. I was terrified, and I couldn't get away from him. It was a feeling of evil, as if it was trying to attach itself to me. I woke up shaking. I knew it was just a dream, but I could still feel it. For the entire day, my mind could not let go of his face and the feeling of pure evil. I have tried so many ways looking up what I could do on the internet, and no one has been able to give me an answer. So if you've had a similar experience like this, where your dreams dictate your future, or give you clues about what might happen, let me know in the comments.